for joining us today. While you come in, please like and share. Like and share. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Want to see who's joining us tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While you're coming in, comment, like, share. We need you to share this broadcast. The numbers are climbing. Thank you so much. Miss Ludell Gray, I saw that you just came in. I haven't heard from you today. Please update me, Miss Ludell Gray. Carolyn Joan Johnson, good evening to you as well. Deborah Farrington, how are you? Good evening to you. The numbers are climbing. Thank you so much, Lawrence McQueen. God bless you, sir. Nelly Smith, good evening to you. Inga Ramming, good evening to you. Tamara Roll, good evening to you. Angelique Benor, I think I said it correctly. Good evening to you. Karen Marsh, she's tuning in from Atlanta, Georgia. Chantel Cobra, Mel Simeon, we receive the blessings and thank you. God bless you as well. Debbie Lee, Jakira Pinder, Martine Tasha Pierre, Dolly Baptiste, how are you? Candy Cartwright Miller, Ludell Gray, please remember to update me. A Cindy Bole, good evening to you as well. Carmel Lyons is watching. Stacy Marshall. Tyanne Williams. You're welcome, Miss Farrington. You're welcome. Vonnie Farrington. God bless you. Nelly Frank. She's watching from Canada. Welcome to you. Kareem Lady J. Green. Good evening to you. Yvette El Moss. Good evening to you, woman of God. Thank you so much for joining us. Nicole Arnett, good evening to you as well. Cece Davis Dorset, thank you for tuning in. Daughter of Zion, I see that you are sharing already. Good evening to you. Black Beauty Nakfi, good to have you. Shonda Davis, thank you for joining us. Carleen Hanna. Twin, Tonia Farrington, Tamra Simmons, my namesake, Regina Clark, Takira Venus, Vanessa Hill. The numbers are climbing. 71 persons logged in. I'm so grateful to have you tonight. Simple reminder to please like and share the broadcast, please. Help us to get the word out. Share the broadcast. Tasha Duncan, Joanne Williams, welcome, welcome. You're welcome, Miss Dorset. You're welcome. Quince Monroe, Tamara Marie Sims, Lachey Ferguson, welcome, woman of God. Anna Faber Lewis, good evening to you. Melba Rowe, welcome, God bless you. I know that we're over our, yes, Roxanne Williams. I know that we're over our time. We will go into the word in just a moment. I wanna greet as many of you as I can. Humble Chat, China. Kendrika Bo, how are you? Rochelle Stewart, Mika Sweetness. Christina Pointier. Christina Pointier say, I love Mondays for you to come on. Thank you so much. We're honored to, to hear that. Randallette Rowe, blessings, woman of God. God is good. My daughter is home. I just got the I got the testimony from Miss Robbins. God bless you. And congratulations. Kirsten Johnson. 
Thank you for coming in, Mikey Lowe, Michelle Taylor. Please give me my time so I can know how far we are, how far we've gone over our time. Michelle Taylor, that's Harvett McIntosh. Alicantina Williams. Chasette Harris Daniel, welcome. If you're tuning in, thank you so much for six minutes over our time. If you are tuning in for the very first time, please make it known to us. And when you see that message that they're watching for the first time, I invite you to please go over and welcome them and show them some love. After today, you're no longer friend, but you are family. And to all of you that view week after week or as many times as you can, I wanna say thank you for your love and support. Loretta Lightborn, Tim Linson, Tom Linson, Candy Adderley, God bless you, woman of God. Aisha Stewart welcomes. Darren DeVoe, Candiria McKinney. Alice Johnson, welcome, Nikki Roll. Hi, precious. Angela Benham Williams, Renee Green. There was a gentleman that reached out to me today. We tried to locate the number, but we couldn't. Uh, that's Newbold. Just give me that first name quickly, Miss Cox. Jonathan, Jonathan Newbold, sir, if you're watching this, please give us your number. You can message me on the inbox. I wanna reach out to you. Thank you so much, Jonathan Newbold. Nayoshi Davis, blessings. Early Shift Thurston. How are you, Miss Aldeda? Miss Aldeda, how are you? We miss you, okay? Michael Ori Craig, God bless you. God bless you. Miss Candy Adderley said it's a first time. Okay, we're gonna welcome you today, okay? Welcome, woman of God, welcome. That's, I see the name is McBride. I have a difficulty pronouncing the first name. That's Sani Aster. Did, did, um, did I say that right? X-E-N-I-A-S-T-A-R. Sani Aster. McBride. McBride. You know, McBride, welcome. We will pray. Drakira Pinder. Deidre Maxwell. Riddell Dean, how are you? Nadine Valentine, the numbers are climbing. We have 105 persons logged in. Let us pray quickly as we go into the word of the Lord. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Spirit of the living God, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you for all that you are about to do. Thank you for all that you have done. Yes, Lord. But we ask you to have thine own way tonight. After all is said and done, we will be careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory that is due to no other name but yours. And the people of God say, Hallelujah. I want you to turn your Bibles quickly. To chapter 16 verses 11 and 12 we're gonna be reading from chapter 16 I see you coming in God bless you chapter 16 verses 11 and 12 and it reads as thus and Samuel said unto Jesse are there is this all of thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. I want you to type youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he comes. 
and he sent and brought him in. And he was ruddy and withal, and of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Arise, God bless you, anoint him, for this is the one. As I said on Sunday, we are concluding this series, Times and Seasons. And so tonight, we've come to our final conclusion after Sunday of this series, Times and Seasons. If I would use for a topic tonight, it will be your set time. Or simply set time. If you are a true believer in Jehovah, the one and true God. If you are a part of the body of Christ. There should be a desire in your heart to know the prophetic forecast of your season. Which simply means to know what time you are in. I think one of the greatest mistakes, I see you coming in and God bless you. I think one of the greatest mistakes a lot of us have made is doing the right things in the wrong time. During these last few weeks, we talked about several dynamics of time. We talked about time being the movement or progression of a thing. We learned that time is the signal that causes or that will say something will happen. Time is a measurement. Time is embodied through or within man. And on Sunday, we learned, God bless you for coming in, on Sunday, we learned that time is a gift from God. I want you to type that time is a gift from God. Hallelujah. And tonight, I want to submit to you that time is also a governor. Yeah. Time is also a governor. To govern means to have the controlling influence on something. It also means to control the making of policy and its administration. Stick with me, we're going somewhere. Let me say that again. To govern means to control the making of policy and its administration. And when you make policy, you are creating a deliberate system of principles to guide one's decision for the right outcome. I looked at the branches of government, uh, particularly America functions like this, my country does. We have the legislative branch. They make laws I want you to type the legislative branch. I know that's a lot, but somebody needs to read that when they come to the rebroadcast. The legislative branch makes laws. And if they make or introduce the law, then it means the legislators is actually determining time. And then we have the executive branch which, yes Lord, which carries out the law. Uh -huh. They carry out what has been implemented and created. And then we have the judicial branch and they interpret the law. Glory to your name. They interpret the law. The Lord began to, yes Lord, the Lord began to minister to me. And the Lord said, as you consider the topic set time, 
you must also consider that, yes Lord, that time is a governing operation in the systems of God. And God uses time to govern and control what happens in the earth realm. Somebody shout yes. I see you coming in. God bless you. And so, yes, Lord. And so your set time. Now, when we, yes, Lord, when we talk about time being a governor, and we now relate that to the set time. What it means then, when God is talking about the set time, he's talking about the policy or the law that he has created and implemented. And the only one that can change it or veto it is God. Glory to your name. And yes, Lord. And so time, which is the governor, yes, Lord, which is the governor, uh, one of the governing things in the, yes, Lord, I hear you, in the systems of God, when time is implemented or put on a thing, it controls its administration. It controls its occurrences. And so the set time, which is the policy that God has implemented, and it cannot be changed outside of God. The set time, yes Lord, is the measurement God has put in place for some things to happen in your life. And the reason why, I see you coming in, God bless you. The reason why it is called the set time is because God has allowed his government to create policy in your life. It is now law, yes God, and it cannot be changed outside of God. What do you mean? What do you mean? The occurrences in your life that God has allowed, it also reveals his policies for your life. Your set time is a plan that God has implemented. And he, yes, God, he has implemented it with his influence backing it. And so how do we learn of a set time? Glory to your name. How do we learn of a set time? One of the ways the set time of God is revealed in the earth and unto man is through the system of prophecy. Glory to your name. It's through the system of prophecy. So when, yes God, when the Lord releases a prophetic word in your life, he's not only revealing his plan, he is also revealing his law. He is also revealing his policy. I need to go back. He is also revealing his policy. And so when God gives you a prophetic word that I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, again what the Lord is doing is making you aware, yes God, of his laws and his policies for your life. The Lord told me to tell you tonight, he said, be very careful when you do not obey the word of God. When you do not obey the word of God, you are breaking the law. My God, I just want to give you a moment to digest that. When you do not obey the word of God, you are breaking the law of God. And that's why you cannot look at somebody else's life and say, I'm going to do this the way that they did it. Because the, yes God, the governing measure of God, it is so unique, yes God. It all, yes God, it all, can, yes God, I hear you. It all can reach one goal, but it can be different from person to person. One of the ways, one of the ways the Lord laws of God is implemented, yes God, is through the needs that exist. God create laws through the needs that exist. Thank you, Jesus. And so, yes, Lord, when you hear the word of the Lord for your life, you must be very careful how you handle the word of the Lord. And that's why I say to you that there are a lot of people that are out of touch with, with, with the workings of the prophetic movement or the prophetic system of the Lord.
Lord. And so they would say things like this. I don't want to hear another prophecy about a house or a car. And I understand what you are trying to say. Ah, uh, But yes, Lord, but you are trying to say something but being offensive to the system of God at the same time. What would be the right thing to say is, I don't want to hear about a house or a car outside of the rightful instructions of the Lord. Don't make up a prophecy to say to me. That's what we, that would be the right thing to say. But as a matter of fact, we should want to hear whatever God would have to say as long as we know God is saying it. Somebody shout amen. amen. And so then, and so then the timing of God cannot be talked about without mentioning uh, the prophetic system of the Lord. Because the timing of God and the prophetic system of God, they work hand in hand. And then there is another, yes God, there is another prophetic measure that is called seasons. And that is the occurrences in your life. And they all work together. And your season is not the same as time. Your season is the, yes Lord, is the occurrences in your life. And there are many of you that are watching me tonight and many of us, we are in different seasons. And because we are in different seasons, we are in different time zones. And what the different time zones say to us is there are different laws and policies that's been set for our lives individually. And so when we look at it, when, when we look at it, when a country, when a country's time is, is set before another country, uh, like, like Africa, uh, well, our timing is not the same. Uh, they may see morning before we do. And so if there is a holiday like Christmas, we all are expecting the same holiday, but it may come to them quicker than it comes to us. Not because we've been deprived, but we come, yes Lord, but because they are in a different time zone. And so God wants us to understand his time zones. His time zones are prophetic. And so we cannot look at other people's lives and try to pattern it based on what they are doing and what they are receiving. Because it is very possible that we are all in different time zones. God is going to bless all of us, but the blessings will come in different measure and in different times. Somebody give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you for coming in and in different times. And so now, give me my time. We've come to, we've come to our story of focus. We've been talking We've been talking about this for several weeks. And, and, and every week, it's just a fresh word that comes out of it. A fresh word that comes out of it. We see in our, we see in our scripture that we have, a, we have the prophet Samuel who comes to the house of Jesse. And he comes to the house of Jesse with an assignment. Now... I want to back up and I want to share with you that when, when Saul had disobeyed God, Samuel released a prophetic word to him. And Samuel said, and God will raise up another who's better than you. But, but what I'm learning and I've come to understand is when Samuel released the word, he had no idea who the next king would be. And so now, yes God, and now Samuel, he's received partial information, but he's still in mourning. And the spirit of the Lord began to minister to me. And the Lord said, he said, there are prophets that are in the earth realm now that I've given them a part. I've given them a part of the next move. I've given them some of the revelation for the next move. We are now in the timing of God where the Lord is releasing the next part glory to your name. He's releasing the next part for this move. And then, and then God came back to the same Samuel and said, get up. I provided me a king. And then my, my, my confusion is, the Lord had already spoken to Samuel. Why is he in mourning? And then I begin to learn that sometimes, sometimes things in the earth realm are delayed through the will of men because God spoke to the prophet and he said to him how long will you mourn for Saul and I said to you how long is an indication of time it's an indication of time without number 
curse. He said, how long will you mourn over Saul? And so we see now that Samuel had entered into mourning in the wrong time. And there are many of you that are watching me tonight. The Lord is admonishing you to seek his face, to learn the forecast of your season. I share to the people in our church that on our calendar, on the calendar of God, all of us have sad days planned. But according to what we do and how we respond to the things of God or respond to whatever we go through, will yes, God, can cause us to have more sad days than God has planned. And so now we see that Samuel is mourning out of mourning season. And the Lord comes to him and said, how long will you mourn over Saul? I've come to tell you tonight that you must manage your time zone. Yes, Lord. You must manage your time zone. That when the Lord releases you in a time and attaches an occurrence to the time, he will allow your behavior to be according to the time you are in. And there are some of you that are crying that should be rejoicing. But the reason why you are crying in your time of rejoicing is because you brought your sadness in a new season. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. You brought your sadness in a new season. I have to calm down. I feel the fire of God already. You brought your sadness in a new season. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to not manage your time zone. You will know your time zone by the instructions of the Lord, uh, by the announcements of God that is on your life. We learned on Sunday that the, yes, Lord, that the word of the Lord said, your gift will make room for you. And if, if, yes, Lord, if your gift will make room for you, we must look at the holistic understanding of what a gifting is. A gifting is not just something you are good at. But the book of James says to us that every good and perfect thing comes from the Lord. Time is one of the most prized possession the Lord will ever give man. And so then we can safely say that time is also a gift from God. And if time is a gift from God, it will also, yes Lord, make room for us and usher us before great men. And so on Sunday we learn, yes God, we learn that when God speaks to you about a time, what he's really doing is preparing you for the time that is to come. And if you go into a time zone unprepared for what is required of you in that time, you will be frustrated when you should be rejoicing. You will be agitated when you should be resting. Preparation brings you into the prevention of warfare. Somebody give God glory. Preparation brings you into, I got to write this down, the prevention of warfare. My God, my God, my God. And the Lord, the Lord, yes, God, the Lord spoke to me several weeks ago. And he said, if you obey me in this hour, there are going to be some warfare you will not fight. If you prepare the way I tell you to prepare, what is waiting on you will not catch you. What is trying to entrap you will not find you. And you will be able to prevent warfare that if you were not prepared, you would have walked into. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. And so we are responsible to man our time zones. Sometimes a time zone or a set time, which is a specific time carved out of someone's life. Sometimes your set time where God has set that time or that measurement aside for a specific thing. It's not your entire life. Sometimes it is 20 years of your life. Sometimes your set time to do a thing is 30 years of your life. And for some people, it will be years with interruption. And what I mean, yes, Lord, and what I mean by that, and I said this before, but I want to say this again, is we look at some people and we see that they are in their silent years. Glory to your name. They are in their silent years. And what we do is we say God has left them. Yes, Lord. And, and God is no longer using them. But it is very, very possible that he has aligned their time and seasons not to run consecutively, but to run with interruption. 
And so sometimes they have a timing of break and, and then yes Lord a season of silence and then the Lord will release them again. And for some people their seasons at the forefront are doing whatever it is they do. It runs consecutively. So then we must understand that. And so sometimes the Lord announces your set time from birth. Uh -huh. Sometimes he does it from birth. And sometimes he announces it in your adult years, sometimes in your teenage years. How many of you on this broadcast tonight, since when I was nine years of age, I got a prophetic word. And then, and then this word began to talk about my future. It began to talk about what God has called me to be. Yes, Lord, your set time. It, yes, Lord, it encompasses your why. The why you have been born. Glory to your name. And so we are responsible to man our or manage our time zone. In that, we are not functioning outside of the time we are in. And when I say that, it means we are functioning applicably. We are functioning accordingly. And so we are not doing good things in the wrong timing. That's very dangerous. And so we look at the good things when we do that and we begin to second guess it and say maybe, you know, God doesn't want me to do this. I thought the Lord wanted me to do this. I thought the Lord wanted me to do that. I thought God wanted me to function like, like this. But it's not that God is saying no. It's just that the Lord is saying not now. Right. Amen, somebody. I see you coming in. God bless you. Sometimes what we think is no is just not now. Hallelujah. And so we have a prophet of God that, that already got the word from the Lord that God will raise up another king. But he is still mourning over the previous king. And the Lord had to come and interrupt his mourning. He interrupted his mourning and said, how long will you do it? I believe that many of you, yes God, the Lord is interrupting your morning. Yeah. How long will you grieve over a season? How long will you grieve over a person? I'm not even talking about people that are dead. I'm talking about people that are alive. Sometimes we grieve over losses uh, for decades and seasons after season. And the Spirit of God is saying, I've already put the new in your life, but you are mourning over the old. Now, what got me about this was the journey to the new king could not begin until the prophet got up. The journey to the new king could not begin until the prophet got up. And the prophet getting up means he then changed his actions and he began to flow according to the timing he was in. He put oil in his horn. And yes, Lord, and yes, God, the timing he was in was the timing of anointing, was the timing of transference. And so then the prophet had a responsibility for that time. His horn was dry when the requirement was for him to transfer an anointing. And so the Lord had to begin the journey by causing him to get up and put oil in the horn. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. I want to take about three minutes and talk about it. The, yes, God, the way the Lord has given it to me. And the Spirit of God is saying today, he's saying, I'm calling prophets, I'm calling apostles, I'm calling mantles that are now active in the earth realm to function according to your time zone. Yes, God, there are many of you that have transitioned and it was in a way that you did not even expect. You're walking through church splits and, and some disappointments and you are grieving over your last season. I'm not saying your hurt does not matter. I'm simply saying your next awaits you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your next awaits you. I want somebody to type my next awaits me. Glory. Oh, glory, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, my next. My next awaits me. Glory, glory. My next awaits me. And so now the prophet got up. And he's carrying out the word that didn't begin today. It didn't begin that day. It began some time before. 
And he's now on a journey. Glory to your name. And the word of the Lord said that when he arrived, the elders of the town wanted to know, did you come for peace? And he said, yes, I did. I've come to sacrifice. And the word of God said he also invited them to the sacrifice. And then he, yes, God, he told them to consecrate and come. And then he, he went to Jesse. And when he went to Jesse, he said to him, I'm inviting you and your house as well. And the word of the Lord said he consecrated them. And he brought them to the sacrifice. And he began to walk from sun to sun. Now I want you to understand this. At this point, each of Jesse's sons had been consecrated. But they were not chosen for the seat. And the spirit of the Lord said, yes Lord, the spirit of God said, we must understand the differences and the specificity of the seasons we are in. There is a time for consecration and then there is a time for elevation and transition. And the spirit of the Lord is saying, when I told you to consecrate, that was your preparation. Now what I want to show you is now, yes God, he learned that none of the brothers that were before him was the one God had chosen. And he said to Jesse, he said, is there any more? He said, is there any more? And Jesse said to him, he said, I've got another one, but there are two things about him. He keeps sheep and he's the youngest. Now, by the way he explained David, we didn't know his name at this point, but I know his name now, so I'll just say it. The way that he explained David, it caused me to feel that his explanation for his next son was almost, a, yes Lord, was almost a discouragement to Samuel. He said, I have another son, but he is the youngest and he keeps sheep. And so when we look at the grade of his work and the position that he fell in, now Jesse is agreeing with, you cannot be talking about this son. So hear me tonight. The word of the Lord says, and Samuel said, go and get him. God bless you. He said, go and get him. We will not sit down until he comes. Oh my God. Hear me. The word of God. The word of God said he brought him in. And when he brought him in, all God said was, this is the one. And Samuel went to him and the oil poured. Now before I get to this point, I want to share this with you. That yes God, that in the timing of the Lord and in certain time zones that God will have you in, the oil will not pour on just everybody. It will not fall on just everybody. And so many of us, we are trying to anoint people. We are trying to impart into people because they are our favorites or because we really like them. And when I talk about the oil of God, sometimes it doesn't come in a, a, a literal anointing service. Sometimes the oil of God is given through teaching. The oil of the Lord is given through an experience. The oil of the Lord is given through revelation. Uh, the passing of revelation. Yes, God. And there are some, yes, God, that you want to give the secrets of God to. But the Lord is saying, they're not the one. Glory to your name. They're not going to handle it right. They're going to treat it like gossip. They're going to try and take it as their own and not give God the glory. And so now we are in this place and he tried to pour the oil and it would not pour. And God said to him, he said, I know this boy, he looked a little different, but he's the one. And the word of the Lord says, Samuel goes to him, he tilts the oil, and the oil comes out. Yes, Lord. And the oil comes out. Now, I'm going to show you this. I want to show you that before all of this began, Samuel consecrated the entire family. He consecrated the entire family and was about to pour oil on one of the sons until God had to tell him this, that, all of them, they're not the one. Yeah. 
Samuel comes in and it seems like he skips a few steps because he did not go through the time of consecration the way that the other brothers went through before the anointing ceremony and the Lord began to minister to me and the spirit of God said he said he was on yes God he was not just about to be anointed but he was already consecrated the Lord said his body was holy his mind was holy his heart was holy he had spent time before me and he was consecrated before me I would not consecrate him now when his time has come the spirit of God said you've been told to consecrate before the time has come you're wondering why do I have to go this way why God is making me do things the right way why he's making me turn down deals that nobody has to know about God is saying when the blessing comes you won't be required to consecrate then I need you to be holy now I need you to be holy now he walked in the room and when I read it, I said, I missed something. Uh, he, he didn't go through the same process that the others went through. And I had to understand the learning of his life and learning of his experiences with God. That he had already been consecrated before the set time had come. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Give me my time. Oh my God. And so now... He is, yes Lord, he is before the prophet. And while he is before the prophet, the horn tilts. And oil comes out of it. And yes God, I need to say that again. And oil comes out of Hoshaya. And oil comes out of it. And so God began to show me something. He said there is a responsibility to the giver and the recipient. He said there is something about the readiness of the recipient that pulls the oil out of the giver. And the Lord began to minister to me today and God said tell the women and the men of God. He said there is an oil that is brewing in your spirit that is not for you. It is for the recipient. You've got some ready people around you. That's why you feel the oil of God stirring and the spirit of the Lord God say. He said when you begin to pour you will know who's ready because the horn will tilt and the oil will come out. Oh my God. And the oil will come out. Glory to your name. And so then now we see a boy that's been given two names. The youngest and the sheep keeper. Hence, I want to bring you to the word youngest. Youngest, also young, also means immature or even premature. And in, in other words, he was saying it's not his time because he's not ready. It's not his time because he does not have what it takes. He is the youngest. Out of all of my sons, he fall in the bottom of the barrel. He's not ready like they are. He's not strong like they are. He's not equipped like they are. But what I want to share with you is they were all developed in two different fields. Glory to your name. The word of the Lord said, and David was always in the field of his father. He worked, yes God, out in the field where he where he grew and yes Lord, where he reared animals. And then we have his brother, yes God, that was on the battlefield of the king. And so hence we have two fields and one field appears greater than the next. Appears greater than the next. One appears greater than the next. Glory to your name. One appears greater than the next because one uh, is led by the king, uh, which seems 
used to be the highest office in the land. I want a pairs to be the greatest because one, yes Lord, uh, is known, is known because what they do, uh, they will become famous among the land. What they say and how they perform will cause their name to become great, uh, will determine the gifts that they receive. Are you ready for this tonight? It will determine the gifts that they received. But now we have David uh, that never received those kind of perks because he was never on the battlefield. He was in the animal field working for his father, doing the job that his daddy told him to do. And the Lord began to minister to me. And God said, you're going to say that he didn't have those perks. He said, but the differences were what they got could be seen. But what David got could not be seen by the natural eye. Uh, they were given natural perks. But David was given the anointing of the Lord. Oh, they may have given you God. They may have seen favor from the king. They may have ate better because of where they worked. But David had the favor of God that will never run out. And for the rest of his life, he would never see hardship because the favor of God, it means more than money. And God told me to tell you today, he said, you can see what they're getting. You can see how they are being elevated. But your elevation cannot be seen by the natural eye. I've got a work in you that man could not detect. But surely they would say, the hand of the Lord is upon them. I'm about to make your development public. I'm about, hallelujah, to make your development public. Glory. Yes, Lord. The Lord said time is a development of things. The Lord develops and he grows and he makes ready through time. Uh -huh. And so now we we have this boy that's not he's not believed in or his family doesn't believe in him. And they say he we have another son, but he's the youngest and he is the sheep keeper. I'm going somewhere and then we're going to shift. The Spirit of the Lord also showed me that youngest also means last. And he took me to, he took me to his word in the book of John chapter 2. When Jesus was at a wedding and they ran out of wine. And when they ran out of wine, Jesus then began to make more wine. But he didn't only make more wine, he made new wine. And the word of the Lord says when they tasted the wine, they said you saved the best for the last. The Lord said there is a policy, there is a law that has been, yes God, that has been implemented over the lives of them that have been put last by men. The Lord said the best is your portion. The best is your portion. Glory to your name. The best is your portion. The Spirit of God said there is a law and a policy over your life that the stone, that the it will become the head cornerstone. Thus, in this, God, in this system, God does a reverse and he makes the last first and he makes the first, you say it, last glory. The Lord say the first will be last. God told me to tell you tonight, he said where you stand, you should be rejoicing and you're not even giving him glory. Oh my God, I gotta go, I gotta go. He said to me, he said, there is a law. There's a law that it, that's over the lives of them that have been put last by man. He said, and in this law, there is always a reversal. Glory to your name, glory to your name. He said, I will, I will make, I will make the last first. And I will make the first become last. I gotta say that again, I will make the first become last. And what I wanna tell you today is you are coming in last 
and you don't even know the forecast of your season. If you knew the forecast of your season, you would have realized that where I am, the law of God must come into play. It must come to pass that I'm last now. I'm counting last now. I'm giving yes, God. I'm giving the worst. I'm seen as if I don't deserve it now. But the more you do that to me, you cause the law of my life to come to pass. I need about 200 of you to begin rejoicing right now. He said, the more you do that, you cause the law to come to pass. You cause my set time to come to pass. And then God begins to show me how set time can then become accelerated time. I said, God, how does set time become accelerated time? The Lord said, the set time is my plan and nobody can change it outside of me. But what, what they would cause me to do is speed up your time. Yes, Lord. Is speed up your time and make you move quicker. And so now I begin to study this and I said, God, so then only the people that can cause this to happen. And the Spirit of God said, no, also the recipient, the life whom the word is on can cause the time to speed up. The Lord said, when you are one season. I want you to know your next season is waiting. But in your next season, I've got something for you that you could not have gotten outside of me. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. And what I have for you, are you ready for this? Yeah. He said, what I have for you is a new time zone. They can fire you, but they can't change your time. Uh, they can mistreat you, but they can't change your time. They can try to block you, but they can't change your time. Lord, he said to me, he said, the devil acts like he is the owner of time. Only God is the owner and the creator of time. All the devil does is steals it. All he does, glory to your name, is steals it. So now we have a boy who is the youngest and because he is the youngest, it shouldn't happen this way in his family, but God makes it happen quicker. Yeah. Uh, he makes it happen quicker. Glory to your name. I want to prophesy over about 500 of you tonight and let you know God is about to do some things in your life quicker. God is about to put a new engine. He's about to put a new fire on what you are waiting on. He's going to speed up you've been waiting on. I need to redeem to the Lord to say so. God is going to do it quicker. I need you to give me my time. I need you to give me my time. Just check, keep checking that and let me know how we're doing there. Oh my God, I need you to begin sharing right now. Sue Stewart, God is doing it for you. Sue Stewart. Yes, Lord, the Lord is doing it for you. Glory to your name. The Lord is doing it for you. Yes, God, the Spirit of God. He said it was too young. He was too young for it. But what, what David began to do is he began to obey God. He obeyed God by making the most of the time put before him. He pulled all of the potential out of the time. And I told you on Sunday, gifts begin to spring up that were not even associated with his job. The sheep keeper also became a musician. His gift was so needed, he was able to run the evil, to run the evil spirits that were around the king. So now, we see that he's in accelerated time. God began to do some things quicker. The Lord woke up the prophet. He said, get up. I got somebody that's obeying the law. I have somebody that's obeying the law over their life. I know you're mourning, but I cannot allow you to mourn another day because I will not allow you to block and delay him any longer than he needs to be delayed. I'm going to prophesy to you today. The Lord is some people to bless you and they be yet to move the spirit of God says 
your blessing will not be held up by the decision of man. I will raise up another to bless you. I will raise up another to do what I need to be done in your life. Shout yes! Yes! Right there. He said, he said, glory to your name. He said, I need you to get going. I provided me a king. The Lord made provision for himself. And now we see this young man. He's called the youngest. And he's been given this seat. Thank you, Lord. How do you manage accelerated time? Because if something was supposed to happen in five years... And God did it in two. I need you out there to just grab a hold of this tonight. If something should have been received, Miss Yvette Moss, in two years, and God does it in three months, glory to your name. If there was somebody that should have heard your name in 2025, but God said you've done so well in the midst of an uncertain season, you didn't bow to bail. I made you do the hard thing. He said, I'm going to echo your name in this year. Yes, Lord. I'll make you reap in the same year you sowed. I'll speed up your harvest. I'll put a new time zone on your fruit and make them give birth in a new season so you can be blessed. He said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. If something was supposed to happen in five years, and the Lord has you in acceleration. It means it will happen quicker. And the let my mandorian see. It will happen quicker. I hear you, God. It will happen quicker. Yes, Lord. It will happen quicker. It will happen quicker. Something was supposed to happen in five years. And God does it in a year and a half. What do I do with the next three years and six months? God began to teach me about this. He says, when I speed up your time and I cut your process down and I make you do something quicker, I make you receive it sooner uh, than the time that was allotted in the first place. Uh, the question is, again, what happens to the time left? I told you on Sunday, the Lord does not waste anything. He does not waste anything. And he will definitely not waste time. And so the Lord said to me, he said, you think the blessing is in the acceleration. He said, but you got a blessing there. But what I'm doing is I'm giving you bonus time so you can also receive restoration. There were some things I told you to do that you didn't get to do for your own accord. And, and you did your own thing and time ran out. And you were on another course. And God said, with the time left over, I will give you that time to Thank <laughs> you. 
when you are leaving out the fact that you're going to have two years. Oh my God, two years left over. And the Spirit of the Lord said, He said, I'm going to cause, I'm going to cause time gained to be shown in your body, to be shown on your biological clock, to be shown, yes God, in your business, to be shown in your health, to be shown in your opportunity. Contracts are about to be extended because of this accelerated time. I gotta say that I received the word of the Lord. Glory to your name. I see you coming in. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glorious Lord. Glory. Glory to your name. Yes, God. Hallelujah. What do you do with time left over? From accelerated time, the Lord will add it to the need in your life. Glory to your name. Time is alive. And so time also produces after its own kind. It produces after its own kind. I want to show you this. I want to glory to your name. Glory to your name. There was a woman by the name of Hannah. And she wanted to give birth. She went into the temple. And then God answered her through the priest. And the word of the Lord said, God gave her the answer. Ah, and the next year, the same time, she gave birth. Do, do you agree with me? Yeah. She gave birth. And the word of the Lord said, the word of the Lord said she obeyed God. And she did, yes God, what she told God she would do. God answered her based on what she vowed unto him. And now the word of the Lord lets us know that this couple didn't just have one. But this couple ended up with five more. Oh my God. And the word of God, the Lord began to minister to me. And the Lord said, that's not just children. That's time. Oh my God. That's not just children. That's time. And the spirit of God said to tell you today. He said, I may give you an extra year to put in your business. But what you do in that year will determine if I give you 25 more years. Anybody got that just now? Yes. Oh my God, anybody got that just now? Yeah. The Spirit of God said to me, He said, tell the people you are in accelerated time. You are about to do, yes God, what you were waiting on quicker. You're about to do things quicker. You are about to receive quicker. Oh my God, God is the orchestrator of everything. I wish I could have gone into the administration because policy is the controlling of the law and the administration. And so in the administration is how it will be followed. Who will do the job? How will they do the job? And the Spirit of the Lord said, don't worry about the logistics. He said, don't worry about the details. He said, all you have to worry about is did the word, did the word, yes God, did the word come from God? Did God issue the word? And if you believe that God issued the word, all you have to do is obey God and God will do the rest. He'll work out how the degree is going to come. Miss Roberts, I want you to stand now. Lift your hands. The Lord spoke to me about you today. Oh, And the Spirit of the Lord said, the room is dark, y'all. The Spirit of the Lord said, glory to your name. He said, there is another certification. He said, you, you've been fighting this for a while. But God said, you got to go back. You have to go back. And this time, he's going to so tweak your studies that you're not just coming out with a degree in one thing. But you will come out with a certification in another area. And the Spirit of the Lord said, this is your season to expand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I am expanding your life. I am expanding your capacity. I am expanding your opportunity. Where you will deal with clients that are not just battling with this. But are battling, yes God. You, but I'm battling with so many other deficits, and I hear the Lord say, Your name will be known in offices you try to be known in. And the Lord says, Get ready, captioning on the word, Get ready, 
emphasizing on the word get ready for this announcement will make yes Lord will be made known and be a start and be made alive in not so many days not years not so many days that you need to go back I'm expanding your life I'm expanding your capacity and I'm giving you the grace yes Lord I've given you the grace to do more yes Lord oh, I've given you the grace to do more I've given you the grace to do more I've given you the grace to accomplish the expansion. The grace, saith the Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord said in 2016, because you moved, you missed the time. I give you this time again. My God. I give you this time again and I say unto you I will make the provision for I have provided you for myself and I'm putting profits in this area because they're missing on the Lemancia. They are missing when they're sitting with prophets and they're, and they're diagnosing the prophets of God incorrectly. And the Lord said, I'm providing myself with a prophet in this area, with the eye to see what man cannot see and what a natural degree cannot teach them. Get ready, prophet of the living God. I will send you, I will send you to seek out and make ready and make right and make developed what man cannot do. Begin worshiping the Lord. Begin worshiping the Lord. Glory, glory. 
I want to see you coming in tonight. I cover all 135 of you. Oh, now my dear Shai, God, you know the name. You know them by nature tonight. You know where they are. God, I pray, I pray, I pray. You're ushering them in, yes, God. You're ushering into, yes, God, into a greater grace, greater power, greater authority. They will manage this time, oh God. Glory, glory, glory. Operation is going to happen quicker. That's how I heard it. And they're saying it's going to be 22 hours. It's going to be record breaking. Yes, it's going to be real. It's going to be record breaking. Take me when you have me precious. It's going to be record breaking. It's going to be record breaking. It's going to be, yes, God, it's going to be record breaking. That's what I hear echoing in my spirit. Record breaking time. You're going to finish this course quicker. You're going to finish this course quicker. I hear you, Lord. I see you, Miss So Blessed Pattern. God bless you tonight, Candy Fong. God bless you, Nancy Bennett. I dare you receive it, receive it. You burn minds. Receive the word of the Lord. Nicole Audit, receive the word of the Lord. You're going to do it quicker. Can somebody just type, I'm going to do it quicker. I'm going to do it quicker. Give me my time. I'm going to do it quicker. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory, 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 glory. The Lord, I want to say everything He told me to say. I want to make sure. Hallelujah. I said everything He told me to say. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to your name. You're going to see it. You're going to do it quicker. You're going to do it quicker. You're going to do it quicker. He sent me here tonight to let you know that there are many of you that are on this broadcast tonight. God is going to do it quicker. You are in accelerated time. The plan of God is moving toward you quicker. Yeah. He's giving you time, yes God, to restore things in your life that have run out of time. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, God, that have run out of time. Glory to your name. Glory. Yes, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord says you're not running out of time. You're not running out of time. I want you to type that, say that, shout that, praise that in faith tonight. I'm not running out of time. There are some of you that have created your own deadlines. You said, I gotta do it by this time and you are so frustrated. The Lord said, you're not running out of time. 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 I'm gonna do it quicker. I'm gonna do it quicker. Yes, God. I'm gonna do it quicker. Yay! I'm gonna do it quicker. You're gonna reach to that place with even greater victory. With greater victory. With greater victory. Say the Lord God. My God, mighty God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, God, yes, God. In your homes tonight, begin to worship God as you adjust this word in your heart. Hallelujah, yes, God. You got to do what God says, do now. When God tells you to move, move now. Don't procrastinate. When God tells you, make the decision, do it now. Remember with David, he didn't have to be consecrated in the room. It was already done. He had to be consecrated because of the seat he was about to sit in. The spirit of the Lord is causing you to go the way you are going because of what is before you. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. You got to move how God is telling you to move. You got to say it when he tells you to say it. You must obey God. Can somebody type that? I must obey God. Can somebody shout it to the Lord God? I will obey what you say. I will obey what you say. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm saying. 
Yes, Lord. Tonight you are under his God. You are under the greater grace of the Lord. To move your time quicker. Move you into a greener place quicker. Move you into a wealthier place quicker. Move you into the word of the Lord. The destination of the Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just begin to worship him as your seat of thanks. Begin to bless him as your seat of thanks. Glory to your name. Begin to give him glory as your seat of thanks. And you Lord, some of you couldn't even find your way out. You were wondering, God, when am I coming out of this place? When am I coming out of this thing? When are you going to deliver me out of this season? And I hear God say, he said, this place will be your thrusting place. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. I cover you tonight in and under the blood of Jesus. You will manage this time well. You will manage this time well. Glory. You will manage this time well. I see you coming in. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. Cover your people, oh God. I know, I know, God. I know that you're moving on behalf of your people. God, I pray tonight. I pray, I pray, God. As the one that's been given this assignment tonight, Lord, I pray. For those that feel stuck in a low place. For those that seem stuck in an underestimated place. God, I pray for them tonight. I pray that your grace it finds them tonight. Your wielding power it finds them tonight. They will not be overwhelmed in this place. They will not be overwhelmed in this place. They will not be overwhelmed in this place. I hear the Lord say, some of you, you've been stolen from. Ah, there are people that try to steal your inheritance away. They try to steal what you've been waiting on but the Lord God said what I'm going to give unto you will not be able to compare yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord will not be able to compare and you will see that there is no one that can take anything from you that God has delivered into your hands that the Lord has delivered into your hands hallelujah Right where you are, just lift your hands and receive of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and receive of the Lord right where you are tonight. Mighty God, I thank you that this is not just a sermon, but this is fresh oil tonight. It spews across this broadcast as oil tonight, enabling your people to do what they could have not done before. I thank you for a greater push. Tonight there is a thrusting tonight. I give you glory. I give you honor for what you're doing now. Glory to your name. Amen. Glory to your name. I see you coming in. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray over you before I let you go tonight. Give me my time. Glory to your name. Woo. Glory to your name, Father. We cover your people. We thank you for your word that is yea and amen. We thank you that you've given us the audacity, the privilege, and the authority to declare that no weapon formed against their time will be able to prosper. And God, we stand in agreement with what you say and what you do. Thank you for every person that's logged in tonight. Everyone that is watching tonight. Those that will watch the rebroadcast. Those that are watching right now. Glory to your name. Those that have come earlier in the broadcast. That have come later into the broadcast. Thank you that you blessed us. With a corporate release tonight. And we will not leave it empty. Thank you Lord God. That we will go in the strength of this word. For many days. And we say amen. And amen. Can we give God glory? Hallelujah.
Can we give God praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. I honor the Lord for you tonight and you joining us. I'm excited for what the Lord is doing in our lives. Glory for what the Lord is doing in your life. I encourage you to share this broadcast. Continue to soak in the word of the Lord. You are in accelerated time. God is about to do it quicker. And this is the word of the Lord over us tonight. And we can say amen. God bless you for tuning in tonight.